great evening and I want to welcome you to the Revitalize the Total Woman podcast with your host Lakeisha McKnight. I am excited to be here on this evening. It is indeed September 13th, 2017 on this lovely Wednesday. It's about 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this particular podcast show is a podcast show, some media outlet that is a part of the Women of Elevation Career Services International nonprofit organization. It is indeed a 501c3 organization that's based in Chesapeake, Virginia, here in the United States of America. America or North America, where our mission is to empower women like yourself with the tools to be able to create, relate, and elevate. Those are our three core areas. And for the months of September through December, we're preparing women to elevate, to really walk in your due season, in that season of success. Okay, and so what we're going to be doing tonight is continuing on with our dialogue from last night where we were talking about divergent thinking and how divergent thinking can help women prepare for elevation. You know, remember when we first started going into this core area of elevation, we talked about what it is. And then yesterday we talked about what divergent thinking is. We we spoke about how it's really uh, an opportunity for people to to really talk about things and brainstorm different ideas without really having to be frustrated or uh, focusing in on organization and allows you to have creative type of thinking. That's what divergent thinking allows you to be able to do. And as a career woman, uh, it's important that you brainstorm, that you think of different ideas that's going to help you to propel forward and move you in the direction that you desire regarding your careers. So, I really want to focus in tonight on how you to how really getting you to think divergently can help you to succeed in a corporate job or in the business world. So that's what we're going to be going into right now. Uh, Before I do that, though, I do want to acknowledge and say thank you so much for those of you ladies listening in uh, who are from various countries around the world. I know many of you are listening in from Croatia, from China from the Republic of Korea, uh, from all around the world, throughout the United States. And we say thank you on behalf of all the board of director leaders of this organization, Women of Elevation. We say thank you for being connected to the podcast. So let's get started. So how do you get started with regards to thinking divergently? Well, number one, I want you to think about fast and frequent failures. Fast and frequent failures. You know, making as many mistakes as possible, as quickly as possible, means you're heading swiftly towards the right solution to a problem. For example, try holding flash flood sessions with, you know, where, where you're just having sessions or you're, you're really having a gathering, maybe you and a few other friends and learn how, you know, learn to be comfortable laying out really possible solutions in front of one another. So solutions to any type of concern that maybe um, you all feel passionate about and just kind of just talking about it, just had it, having this session where you just kind of lay it all out there, all possible solutions in front of you. Okay. But, you know, it's really all about making as many mistakes as possible, as quickly as possible. Uh, really, and it really means that you're really heading in the right direction towards a possible solution. Some people think that that's a little weird, but you know, you're really just putting it all out there. And that's what divergent thinking is really all about. Uh, Number two, in order to really get you in the direction of thinking divergently, I want you to thank Google. That's right. Thank Google. You can really find anything on Google these days. So, you know, now it doesn't, this really (laughs) means that, um, you know, there, there are various ways to gather the information that you're looking for out there in the world. So some people try to make excuse for not really being able to find anything, but the Internet is there and available for us. And I want you to know that when it comes to uh, being able to research, don't limit yourself to Google as well, because there are various means in which you can go and look for uh, solutions to concerns. So just think about that. Think about that. Number three, solve the right problem, solve the right problem. So when, you know, you're coming together with some friends, say you're together with some friends. And if you're, if you're solving a difficult problem, 
you know, really encourage one another to start with the most basic phrasing of a question. Okay, help one another to find a faster way to fail, to recover and try again. Now, if the question that you're really trying to solve takes longer to grasp or understand than the actual solution, uh, then you all are solving the wrong type of problem. This is if you're trying to solve a problem together. So this is just one way of doing it, just getting a bunch of friends together and seeking to solve a problem. So that's what we're really basing this example off of. Okay, so make sure you're, you're solving the right problem. Number four. Um, may sound a little weird, but you know, zig where others zag, zig where others zag. Now it can be highly productive to think differently and it really pays off though in the long run. Okay. Now the founder of economist credits, quote, blue ocean strategy, close quote, or staying away from the quote, red waters, close quote, of fierce competition with the success of the magazine. So, you know, what we're essentially saying here, Okay, but, you know, it is productive. It can be worth the while to think like no one else thinks. Okay, think differently. It's okay. And it's really encouraged, especially when you're thinking divergently. Number five, respond to curiosity when it arises. Respond to curiosity when it arises. So encourage, you know, your friends that you have gathered together, encourage each other to answer, you know, answer their own questions now and not later while the curiosity is still there. Okay, so this is when divergent thinking has the highest chance of being cultivated. Okay, this is where it has the highest chance of being cultivated when you all are encouraged to answer the questions at that time. Don't wait till later. Do it right there and then. Number six, defer judgment. Okay, defer judgment. So practice this yourself and encourage, you know, even the people that you're with, your friends that you have gathered together, encourage one another to practice it. Remember, it includes both criticism and praise. Number seven, Encourage numbers, encourage numbers, you know, have each one of you all to collect every possible idea before settling in on a solution, every possible idea before settling on a solution. Number eight, support the strange, support the strange. So encourage each other to strive for the unusual, okay, the unusual and really explore different perspectives. Be, you have to be open to it, though, first and foremost. Number nine, combine ideas. Combine ideas. So look for combinations of ideas that might work together. You know, building off the ideas of others is really a great place to start. It's like a springboard for you. Number 10, create a tolerant environment. A tolerant environment. Now, divergent thinking is more likely to thrive in an environment that permits different types of expression, encourages risk, and allows failure. Now, divergent thinking can be supported by facilitating and supporting individual expression. So that's what is really encouraging people to do. Just allow people to freely think and provide their own ideas regarding a solution. Number 11, provide support and encouragement when ideas are blocked, okay? Because sometimes you can have that little, uh, some people call it brain fart. Some people call it where they just kind of get stuck. Uh, The more patience you put into this, the more likely, you know, you and your friends will be able to pursue, you know, your own ideas, even when it's a little foggy at the the onset, okay? Because it can be really hard at, at the beginning where you're just getting started, but you know, just be patient with one another. Number 12, encourage autonomy and ownership. Encourage autonomy and ownership. Now you want to praise each other for your, your own unique solutions or ideas. Refer to, to your ideas later, okay, as quote unquote, you know, your name and then just add the word solution to it or your name and then question. So say, for example, to be like Sally's solution or Andrew's question or something like that. 
Number 13, help listeners or help, I should say, help each other appreciate how they, how to learn, how each other learns, because some people learn differently, okay? So talk about the process of learning and how it occurs differently under different circumstances. Number 14, brainstorm. Brainstorm. So during brainstorming, you all are really spontaneously contributing ideas in response to a problem statement. Crafting a a good problem statement requires some skill. Uh, You don't want the problem to be so broad that it will be difficult to find uh, patterns and ideas and possible solutions. So, you know, you also don't want it to be so specific that the ideas seem relatively inevitable. Okay, so keep the number of people in the group uh, fairly small. Don't don't let it be like, you know, a whole lot of folk. It can't be like 20. I don't advise that. Maybe about seven, six, so that no one feels lost in the crowd. Form, you know, small group, you know, who would naturally have different perspectives from one another. So you don't want it to be the case where everyone's going to have like a similar opinion or a similar idea. All right. Number 15, substitute, substitute. So what are the alternatives to materials and processes and methods that you all are using? Okay. And then find the connection. Number 16, how can you all combine seemingly disparate ideas? Okay. At first it may seem like they're different, but how can you combine them? Number 17, adapt. How can you all in a group adapt something that you are already doing or using for a new project. Number 18, modify. What materials or processes or methods can you all modify to solve a problem? Number 19, diversify. Can you all put a, put material, a process, or even method to another use? Number 20, eliminate. Now, I need you to think in terms of removing, not adding. So what can you all do to eliminate problems or inefficiencies? What materials, methods, or steps can be eliminated? Number 21, rearrange. Rearrange. So how can you all move around materials, methods, steps, and processes to solve a problem? Number 22, brainstorm. Now, this is a really huge exercise. So you really have groups of, you know, you have the group of individuals, you know, you all are coming together. You're brainstorming first on on sticky notes or index cards without speaking to one another. Okay, this encourages all voices to be heard and prevents each of you from forgetting your ideas as you wait for an opportunity to speak. Then you have each other to share your ideas and build upon them together. Now, in a variation of this technique, you know, one of you writes down three ideas on a piece of paper in response to a problem statement and pass it, pass it on to the next person in the group who continues the process. So again, uh, these are just some strategies to help you push forward and get started. There's some other tips that I have before me, um, such as using technology. Uh, sometimes technology offers exciting ways to complement and maybe enhance, um, you know, divergent thinking techniques. OK, uh, there's other platforms online that allow you to do it as well. There's one platform that's called uh U Tongo. It's an online brainstorming platform. Again, that's U as in Y O U and then Tongo, T O N G O, U Tongo. And I know there was another, there's another uh, platform online that allows you to brainstorm too. It's called Mind Miser. You might have to Google that as far as spelling, but Mind Miser. All right, so I definitely wanted to highlight these particular strategies here to help you head in the right direction of engaging in divergent thinking. Uh, you definitely can continue to do your own research, your own due diligence to find out more about what divergent thinking is and how it can help you. Understand that these strategies are going to help you to to really not force yourself to be included in a box when it comes to thinking of ideas. And this is extremely important when it comes to trying to plan your future um, now, you might not plan it to a T because things are going to happen 
God's will is going to be done regardless. So I, you know, I recognize and I encourage people to be very, very spiritually minded here uh, and making sure that your will is aligned with his will. Uh, but also at the same time, uh, for those of you who are in business, you know, this can be definitely beneficial uh, because it's going to help you to, to really do some things that are different than what's standard in the marketplace. Okay. So again, thank you so much for listening uh, on tonight. Remember, uh, we have some great things uh, that lies ahead. I am going to share with you right now. I have my handy dandy notes out. I want to let you know what we're going to be actually covering. Okay. What are we going to be covering uh, on next week when it comes to thinking? Because you know, uh, we're still focusing in on that uh, this month. So remember, we just did divergent thinking this week. Uh, Next week, we're going to talk about visionary thinking. I know visionary thinking. How do you how do you think like a visionary? You know, what is visionary thinking and how do you think like a visionary? We're going to talk about that on next week. So I definitely appreciate each and every one of you uh, tuning in tonight uh, and those who are going to be coming back and listening to this replay here. Uh, Remember, I definitely encourage you to visit the website www.womenofelevation.com to learn more about the podcast and about this nonprofit organization. Remember, we're here to provide you with the tools to be able to create, relate, and elevate. Be blessed. And I'll speak with you on next week on Tuesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time.